Hey, it's Jason Ayers from Send More Leads, where we make mobile home park, RV park, and campground marketing simple. Today, we're gonna to be talking about optimizing your website. Now, this is part of the seven-step RV park marketing plan, which you can get for free at sendmoreleads.com. And if you've gone through that plan already, then you already know that optimizing your website is not what comes first. Because if people can't even get to your website, then there's no point to optimize it, right? So we have to do things to bring people to your website before it's optimized and before you can really convert the visitors to your site into guests or tenants. But let's assume that you've gone through that plan and you already know how to get people to your website. Well, at that point, your website becomes very important. And we're gonna go over why and what you can do to convert more of your visitors into guests. And there are a lot of problems out there that uh, a lot of parks have that they don't even realize they have. You're gonna learn about them today in this uh, whiteboard session. So, there's this concept that I want to introduce to you and let's say you got a you know your average person here and I'll just preface by saying I'm not a not much of an artist but you've got this person and the concept is say that's their brain right the confused brain does not does not buy right so we've got a dollar bill here, Visa card, and this represents them renting a space. If they're confused, this doesn't happen. What happens is if they go to your website and they're confused by anything on your website or by the process, it kind of overloads the mind and the internet gives them options, right? So they don't buy, what do they do next? Well, what they do next is they go back to Google and they search and they find, what do they find when they search Google? They've already seen your site, they don't like it. Well, they find your competitor, right? Or your other competitor or your other competitor. And then that person gets in their RV or their tent or whatever they're doing and they drive down the road past your park, right, to your competitor. That's not cool, right? That's not something we want. We want them to go to your park and to rent a space from you so that you will be happy as they pull into your park, right? So you got a driveway there. So that's what we want to happen and I'm going to show you how to make that happen using your website and some simple concepts that I'll break down with pictures like this so it's just easy to understand and uh, conceptualize. You know, I found one of the best ways to really break a problem down or to convey a concept is just to draw pictures, right? So let's get rid of all this stuff. You got the, the idea that the confused mind, right, doesn't buy. And that's kind of an age old concept in marketing. So we'll just go ahead and erase this on the trusty whiteboard here. And we'll go over some of the reasons why people end up being confused and not buying. Okay, reason number one is a lot of people have, a lot of park owners spent money to have their websites designed, but they only spent money on one part of the website. Really, they, they only really invested the dollars to get the main part done. And to understand the parts, we'll just draw a little diagram again. So here you have your brand, right? And your brand is what you want your visitor to remember 
after visiting your site. And this is my uh, attempt at a really great looking star. So you want them to go away and remember your brand. Well, who's in charge of that? Well, it's designer, right? The person that designs the site. That's what gives them kind of the feeling. Maybe your logo is on there and they remember your logo or they remember the pictures on your site. And this is where most park owners spend a lot of their, their money. And with my clients, what we found is when we address the other two areas, that's when visitors really start to convert into guests and start reserving spaces. So what are the other parts? So there's a part over here, which is content. The chances are if you have a website already, you have content on your site, right? But who created that content? Uh, did you create it? Did uh, the website designer create it? Did someone on your staff create it? Well, the person that creates that content right is the writer right or the copywriter right and there's a term in in advertising and marketing it's called copywriting and it's the ability to sell using words right it's the ability to persuade somebody by knowing how to use language and how to structure things to do it you know you've heard uh, the term probably uh, this person's gifted with a silver tongue, right? Or the gift of gab, right? Um, and you may associate this with a lot of really good salesmen, right? Where you have a good experience, let's say going to buy a television and the person's just very accommodating and the next thing you know, you walk out of the store with a television, right? Well, that's the ability to use words to sell. And it's a, it's a learned skill. There's really an art and a science to doing it. So that's the writer, right? So we, we now have this other piece connected to your website. And this is where a lot of thought needs to be put in and where money should be invested. And, you know, usually, like I said earlier, the money usually just goes here, which means that the designer is very happy, right? But the problem is when you just focus on the brand, what happens, right? When there's no, when the, when the content is not persuasive, or when it's not easy to do this next step, which is function, right? So what is function? Function is what you want them to do on the site, right? So if we just put do right here, right? We want them to rent, or we, not, we want them to reserve a space, right? That puts money in your pocket, increases your revenue. So that's what we want them to be able to do on the site. And these things are connected. So who does that? Well, typically it's an engineer, right, that does that. Or someone who's very familiar with connecting all the technical components and everything else on the site, right? So that might be an online reservation system. It might be um, kind of the system you have to get them to call you and to uh, make a reservation. It might be uh, capturing their email address so you can market to them. So that's the function of the engineer. Right? So what happens when you only focus on your brand and you don't use a lot of words that sell by using good copywriting or you don't put the, the big part of the focus on function, right, which is what you want them to do, then what happens is they come to your site and they may have a favorable impression, but if they don't know what to do, right, then what happens, right? Then they're looking at your site and here they are in their little computer, right? And person's here, right? And they're confused because it's not really, the content is not really well written, right? It's a little confusing maybe, or they, they're not, uh, it's too much information or it's not the information they need, or maybe there's a bunch of extra stuff, right? Maybe there's a bunch of advertisements and he talks about a bunch of stuff that's not really related to the park. So this person ends up feeling confused, right, which, and what do they do? Well, like we said earlier, they go over 
to Google, they search and they find your competition. Right? And you end up feeling not as happy as you should be because they go down the road to your competition. So how do we change this around? How do we make it to where they really want to rent from you and it's easy to rent from you? Well, you do it by allocating uh, money, right, your budget, to content and function. And in content, you use good copywriting. And this is really an art and a science. So if you don't have a lot of experience with copywriting, uh, it can be really smart to invest in a copywriter, somebody that knows how to write copy. Um, you know, maybe somebody who really knows the industry really well and who writes a lot of copy for the industry. And um, that's one of the things that I do for clients and to great effect, right? We get, we get clients that come into our test park. Um, if you've been following along the seven step marketing plan, you know that we have a test park and that's where we test out a lot of our marketing ideas before we roll them out because I don't want to try ideas with your park, right? I don't think you should, should do that, right? It's kind of dangerous to just uh, sign up with somebody that, that has a bunch of untested ideas, right? You want to make sure this stuff works. So we tried out with our test park and a lot of times tenants will walk in using the exact words, right, that are in the articles on our site Right? So I have certain phrases, right, where I say certain things in these articles, also in the videos, right? We strategically plan these messages and they'll come in and they'll repeat back these words that were in the, the video or that were on the website and they will end up renting a space, right? Because half the battle often is just getting them there. and using very good copywriting, we set it up in their mind to where they feel like they need to see our park or to visit our park or to rent from our park before they look somewhere else, right? And that's, that's where writing really comes in, right? And you've probably had this experience. If you've, uh, if you've dealt with like a salesperson who doesn't really know what they're doing, right? And they're, they're kind of fumbling and bumbling through everything, it's kind of painful, right? And it's like, you kind of can't wait to get out of there. Whereas if you're dealing with somebody who really knows the product, right? They're not salesy. It's, it's not like, uh, you know, this is not like a used car lot, right? Where you've got some guy with a, a megaphone, right? Who's just blasting at you while you're, uh, you know, covering your ears because you can't stand it, right? That's not good copywriting. That's not good sales right? Good sales is just really knowing the industry, really knowing the product and knowing what tenants think, right? And, and what they're doing and what they want and then conveying that really well uh, in your website, in the copy on your website, in your videos, right? So let's say these are pages, right? Or these are blog posts, right? And these are some of your videos. You really want to have all this message integrated. You want to integrate it with your brand. So that's where the, the copywriting comes in and that's really important. So then what about function, right? Function is also vitally important. I, I go to a lot of websites when we're reviewing uh, sites, right? So one of the services that we have and really the beginning point to work with send more leads to start filling your park is we do a video review of your website. And we do that for a reason, right? We're looking for content. We're seeing how that works. We're looking at your brand. And more importantly, we're looking at the function of your site. Is it easy for people to rent? Is it easy for people to reserve a space, right? The easier it is, the more likely they're gonna rent a space from you. So these are the different parts of your website. And the big mistake, right, is just spending money right here on the brand. So. I think that gives you kind of a good idea of what you've got, right? Because your content is, you know, it's really essential. It's what you want people to read and to come away with when they read your site, right? You want them to be happy. You want them to rent from you. 
the function, right, is what you want them to do. And you got a little checklist here. You got the person visiting your site. Maybe this is your online reservation system. You know, you want them to go through and do that and you want it to be a pleasant experience for them, right? So they end up uh, renting from you, all right? So these are all the different functions of your website. Now, let me cover some of the problems and some of the, uh, the big pitfalls that you can get into. Uh, this happens a lot when you just you know, focus on brand and what you can do about it, right? Okay, so one of the big problems with sites that I see and that I review as part of our uh, online video review of your website. And uh, when you do that, you'll see, you know, we go through and we point out all the problems with your site, how to fix it. And we look at your competition and everything else. Well, one of the things that often happens is you got one of two cases, okay? So you've got your website and you got your navigation, you got something to do, and you got some content. Well, in the past, a lot of designers designed sites in something called Flash, right? And they got paid pretty well for it usually, right? So you got a happy designer. Now, the only problem with Flash is Flash doesn't play very nice with Google, right? Because Google can't really read Flash websites that well. So what happens is someone goes to search for your park, right? They go here, right? And they're looking for a place to stay. And what happens? They don't find your park in the search results because Google has trouble with Flash. So what happens to that, right? Obviously, when that happens, you're not happy, right? You're not filling your park. And you may not even know why, right? You may have this question mark, like what, what the heck is going on? I've got this beautiful website, but it's not really working for me. I had this experience with a friend of mine who owns a self-storage facility. And uh, I spent a lot of time telling him, hey, you gotta, you gotta get away from Flash. It's killing you, you know, it's, it's killing your business. And he'd invested a bunch of money in it. So he didn't want to redo it because it looked good. But remember, right, what do we want? We want function, right? Function is one of the very important parts of the website, right? And if this person can't do what they need to do because they can't find your site, right, that's not good. It leads to you being unhappy. So. That's one of the first problems that uh, we see. The other problem is, and the old problem is, maybe it's been a long time since you've refreshed your website. Right? So you've got this website, and it's kind of got really basic design and layout, right? and it doesn't look that good. You know, I mean, it was, it, Having your website designed in, uh, you know, 2002, for example, I mean, you might as well, uh, at this point, you know, it's like writing on stone tablets, right, with a, with a hammer and a, a chisel, you know. And it, it doesn't create that good experience, right? So that's part of what? What did we talk about earlier, right? That's part of brand, right? What you want them to remember. And you don't want them to remember that your site made them feel like it was 1982, right? You want to make them feel that it's up to date, right? And it's, it's easy to use. And why is that? Well, it's because other parks are doing it, right? So if your competition's doing it and you've got this old site, right, that leads to kind of this blah feeling when you look at it, that's not something you want either. And this leads to our next point another uh, a mistake. So if having an old site is mistake number two, right? The first one maybe is your sites in Flash. What's the next one? Well, this is getting very, very uh, important in today's day and age. And why is that? Well, how are tenants looking for parks now? 
Let me show you. They're using iPads. They're using iPhones, right? That's how they're searching for parks. So, you know, you may have a website where, you know, your, ten, your, your potential guest or future tenant is sitting there and they're looking at it and they're having a good experience, right? They're happy. But where are they when they're doing this? They're probably in their house, right? You know, maybe they've got their car parked out front. It's probably the worst car I've ever drawn. They've got their car parked out front. You know, maybe they've got a little pop-up trailer out front and they're ready to go camping or they're ready to go stay at your RV resort. And they're at home, they're doing their research and everything looks great, right? Maybe they reserve a space from you. So that leads to you obviously being happy. But here's where it gets challenging. More and more people are starting to use phones and tablets, right? So the question is, how does your website look on a mobile phone? How does your website look on an iPad? And this is where we get into something called mobile responsive design. So let's say they're not in their house when they're looking for your park, right? Where are they? Well, let's say that here they are, they got their mobile phone, right? And they're looking at your site. Well, where are they? Well, what if they're in their RV already, right? What if they're out on the road? You know, get a little campfire going here. Smoke. They're looking for their next place to stay, right? And they use their phone to search because it's maybe they don't have their laptop with them. Uh, maybe they don't even own a laptop. More and more people are getting away from laptops. So they got their mobile device, right? And they pull up your website and your website is designed for a computer, right? Maybe it's an old design. Maybe the designer just, you know, didn't think to make it uh, set up for a computer. So it looks great here, right? No problem, they're gonna rent from you. But this person who's in their RV and they're saying, hey, let's, uh, let's find the next place we're gonna stay down the road. They look at your site and it's all off the page, right? It doesn't look good. They, they have to scroll back and forth, you know, they can't find anything. Well, what are they gonna do, right? <laughs> They're naturally gonna think to themselves, right? This is confusing. I don't like this experience, right? So where are they gonna go? Well, they're probably gonna go to Google. And we all know where this leads, right? They go to Google and who do they find? They find your competitor or more than, you know, all your competitors. They go to their site, the site looks good, right? So then what happens? Well, here you are, right, out in front of your park. Right, we'll just leave this off for a second. And you're watching all these people drive past your park on their way to the competition, right? So you're not happy. So this is why you need something called a mobile, my hand rank's excellent today. You need a mobile responsive site. And that's because all the statistics show more and more people are using their mobile to go out and rent a park. So if you want a mobile responsive site, right, so that people can rent from you, then you need to have a site that does that, right? So those are a few of the mistakes, right? That's number three, is not having a site that people can find on their mobile phone. So if your site's not mobile responsive, you need to talk to somebody who can make it mobile responsive for you and who knows what they're doing. So those are really the big mistakes that can be made, right? So let's just wrap those up really fast.
All right, what's number one? Number one is spending all the money just on the brand part of it, all right? Number two is having a site that is in like flash, right? Or it's old, right? Which leads to not really an unhappy visitor, but just kind of a blah feeling, right? They're not really enjoying the experience. And make no mistake, right? You're in the experience business. When you're providing a place for someone to stay it, or to live, right? They want a good experience. They want good feelings associated with that. If you've ever looked at a house or a place for you to stay, right? If you pulled it, let's say you pulled into a motel and you kind of got a bad vibe, you know, kind of got a bad feeling about the place, just maybe uh, the way they keep the place up, the appearance of it, right? Gave you mixed feelings. Maybe you drove on down the road. So the third thing is, right, not setting up your site to where it'll accommodate like an iPad, right, or a mobile phone to where it's easy for people to rent, right, to do the function part, right? That's where the, the engineer comes in, right? You need somebody who knows what they're doing to create a site for you that's mobile responsive so that people can go ahead and give you money, rent from you. So those are really the, the three big problems that we see with websites when we're reviewing them. And it, this is a key component. So if you've, already, if you've already downloaded the seven step RV park marketing plan, which works equally well for campgrounds and for mobile home parks, um, then you get the other lessons. If you haven't, go to send more leads to get it. And if you want us to take a look at your website to find out what you should do and how you should change it, we'll review your site for you on video. So let's assume that your website may have some of these problems, right? Maybe it's not mobile responsive. Maybe it's a little old. Maybe it's uh, designed in something like Flash. Or maybe you've got some of the other challenges, right? Like maybe it's your focus was on brand, but not a lot of focus on really professional copywriting from someone that knows the industry, right? Someone that's, that's spent years learning copywriting. Well, in that case, what can you do? Well, you can work with a designer. You can hire a professional copywriter that, that knows the industry. Um, and you can take care of these things so that when visitors come to your site, you'll convert more of them into tenants and guests. What else can you do, right? Let's say that you're a park owner who, uh, who likes to do things efficiently, you wanna do things fast and uh, take care of things right away, right? You don't like leaving money on the table, you want to uh, maximize your revenue. So let's just assume that you're uh, that type of park owner or manager, right? And you're not the type of owner who, you know, doesn't really care and, and kind of just, uh, you know, is happy the way things are, right? So let's assume you're, uh, you're a serious entrepreneur and you want to maximize your revenues as fast as you can. So what can you do? Well, one thing you can do is you can go to send more leads.com and we have a service. So what happens there is, you know, a, a park marketing expert goes in on video all right, so we got your video camera here. We go in on video and we look at your website. And we look for these different things, right? We look at how your brand is working with your content and with the function of the site, right? Because when all these things are right, right, that leads to more visitors, more guests, right? coming into your park. But we don't stop there, right? Because your website's just part of uh, a, bigger, uh, a bigger system. It's part of a bigger uh, puzzle, if you will. So we don't just look at your website on video, right? We also look at your presence online, right? So we have a very comprehensive checklist that we go through. Right? Got our little checklist. 
that we go through and we look online to see what your online presence is like, to see if people are actually able to find your website and get to your website. Because frankly, if, the, if they're not getting there, right, if you're not maximizing the number of people that are coming to your site, there's, there's not a whole lot of point in, uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, reason to really maximize your website, right? So we look at that and we see what you can do to get more people to your website. But we don't stop there because you're not the only uh, person in the market, right? You're not the only owner or manager out there. So we also look at your competition. Right? And we see how they're positioned in the marketplace. Right, if this is the marketplace, we see, oh, okay, you got competitor A here, right? Competitor B here, maybe competitor C is over here. Well, where does your park fit, right? How can you position your park to where your brand, right? This part right here is very memorable and people decide that they want to rent from you. What kind of strategy can you use to do that so that you put Let's say this is your park, right, at the top. Now, you don't have to have the best park in the market, right? There's a saying in marketing and advertising that great marketing and advertising will sell an average product. But the best product in the world is not going to sell without good marketing and advertising. So we look at the strategy and we look at this whole picture to figure out where you fit. And then we provide a list, right? Basically a rundown of suggestions for what you can do, whether you want to you know, use park marketing experts like us to do it for you, or if you want to do it yourself, or you want to have someone else do it. So that's a service we offer. It sends more leads for owners that, that really want to get out there and get out in front and make this happen. So to either get the free seven step RV park marketing plan, which works equally well for campgrounds and for mobile home parks, or to check out this service where we go in on video and do all this for you and end up giving you a video walkthrough, right? It's personalized just for you and for your park that you can watch, you can share with your manager, you can share with your web designer, whoever else you want. Just go to sendmoreleads.com and we'll get everything set up for you. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this. I certainly enjoyed doing this for you and I uh, look forward to talking to you soon.